Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us today for Stay Free with Russell Brand, where we believe in your freedom. The concept of freedom is an absolute one. It is our element. It is as water is to fish. It's the element we must swim in and glory in. Wouldn't you agree with me, Jess from Michigan in the Rumble chat, or angry with you, but also in the Rumble chat. We love you. We welcome you here, whoever you are. Wherever you're from, whatever your previous affinity and affiliations in this community, you are welcome as we oppose these entropying, atrophying and decaying systems. We form new alliance all around us and freedom is abounding. The glory is with us. If you haven't become an awakened one day yet, become an awakened wonder now. We do a different video every single week that is exclusively available just for you. We do great subjects and I really talk around them. What are you saying? My hat's the wrong color. This is a good hat. Thanks, man. Gaz Faz. Who's Ryan Borden? You say wrong color. You mean this? Fake Russell Brand trying to get people to email. That's no good. There only can be one RB, although there's two because there's Roseanne Barr. If you're an Awaken Wonder, you'll have joined us for our conversation with Roseanne Barr. She is such a beautiful exemplifier of the challenges of our culture. When someone has a beautiful gift like Roseanne has, the culture hoovers it up and renders it as a commodity and a product. You'll see our conversation with Roseanne. We'll let you know what day next week it's going to be on. If, you're an, if you want to become an Awaken One Day, we're going to give you one month free. That's how confident we are that this movement's going to change your life. This is the last day you can use the code God is great. Use that code. You'll get a free month. Also, you get to join us for our book club when we talk about, well, not actually, it's not that one, The Problem of Pain. It's a uh, mere Christianity that we're talking about. Plus, we do meditations every week. You will love it. You'll have such a great time being with us. So, yeah, join us if you can. Use the God is great code and uh, get a month for free. You can cancel at any time, of course. And if you're not into it, you know, that's cool. But what we're planning to do, ultimately is establish fully autonomous, quite in the gallery if you don't mind please guys, fully autonomous communities where you determine how you run your life. Eventually we will declare independence. If you're an American watching this, you will know that you have once before thrown off tyranny and you will throw it off again. And why wouldn't you when our leaders are so crazy? We'll be talking about the FBI's corruption in a little bit, in an embarrassing little video as the FBI attempt to publicly arrest someone. Also, guess who's back? Bird flu's back, back again. What should we be scared of next? I would be scared of recent Rishi Sunak, globalist, current Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and in spite of a lovely haircut, nerd. I love being with the kids and setting up the table and making sure that it's all nice and somehow about want to see no more political leaders pretending to be normal on Gracia, sat talking with their spouses, normalising themselves while simultaneously living in positions of great privilege and deceiving us. Infosys, the organisation owned by her father, does deals and is a consistent sponsor of the WF. You know that already. And there is some talk about Infosys doing a bunch of deals with the government prior to the Conservatives presumably being booted out. Can some of you check that for me? Have you heard anything about that gal that Sunak's been doing some deals? Well, check it there. Then. So I don't want to, while we're still on YouTube, make any audacious claims. I don't want to make any untrue claims anywhere. I want to tell you the truth. I believe in the truth and that is what scares them. The truth and freedom is what terrifies them. Man, we got so many good stories coming up for you over the course of the week. Some of the stuff that Pfizer have been doing, some of the things they did do during the clinical trial period, beggars belief. It will dazzle you. It will mobilize you. It will radicalize you. If you consider it to be radical to reject systems that don't have your well-being at their heart. I don't consider that radical. I consider it to be common sense. Should we continue to watch this globalist? You want to watch this globalist? Danny Boy 82420. Do you want to watch this globalist saying how normally he is and how he likes loading the dishwasher? What he won't be telling you is that he invested heavily in Moderna when he was a partner. I think they were called Faleem, a hedge fund that invested in Moderna before they had the good fortune of becoming a pretty prominent product. This hat made a noise that, you know, that sort of noise that makes your teeth go in edge, you know, that kind of velvety sort of sound, that felt sound. Do any of you get that? The table, I really, I really love, love um, doing all of that up. Hard choice, dishwasher sacking, making bed, both have a nice, satisfying ending. What are you talking about, you lunatics? Hey, do you want this thing? You can get it. It's 25% off this week. Become an awakened wonder. Go around in our swag. Guess what we do with uh, the money for it? It's, look, it's made pretty ethical. I was told to read you the things that are ethical about it. It ain't like... Um, 
thanks for that $50, old scratch. We'll give that to the, uh, well, actually, that will go, uh, we won't be able to give that because that goes to Rumble, as a matter of fact. But we'll, anything we make from this swag, we use to get uh, junkies and uh, we do experiments on them. No, we get them into treatment. That's the way that it rolls. That's what we're doing here. Hey, so listen, you, it is time for some bird flu. Bird flu's back. Yes, uh, it's a new type of thing to be worried about, bird flu. Terrifying stuff, obviously. What it is now is it's spreading, leaping across the... I mean, the problem is when birds get flu is they can fly. It does make things challenging. Don't worry, though. Help Tonight, it. the CDC with an urgent alert. Help is at hand. Are telling healthcare providers to be on the lookout for possible cases of bird flu. That's if they encounter sick patients who recently had contact with birds or livestock. One human case reported so far this year in the U.S., but officials say the risk to the public remains low. Pulling the string says uh, one of Rishi's family has got one of the 12 contracts from Israel for oil. Let's fact check that, but at the moment it's merely a rumor. Love the hat, says Frank Daniel. You look like the guy who was handcuffed to Oswald when he was shot. I was that guy. That's what I've been doing. So there you go, bird flu. Be worried about that now. Don't worry because there's a vaccine on its way for you, so everything will be fine. Hey, you know Boeing, they make a damn good plane, don't they? And anyone who says otherwise tends to end up dead. There's a new Boeing whistleblower. My personal advice to that guy is stay out of parking lots. This morning, growing turbulence for one of the world's largest airplane manufacturers, Boeing, as the federal government has launched a new investigation into the company amid allegations about one of Boeing's airplanes. The FAA tells NBC News it's investigating new whistleblower claims made by a Boeing quality engineer about the 787 Dreamliner. The latest claims, first reported by the New York Times, come after a series of dangerous mishaps involving other Boeing planes in recent months. The whistleblower, Sam Salapour, says sections of the Dreamliner's fuselage are put together improperly and that after thousands of flights, it could break apart mid-air. Stop moaning about the fuselage. You can't spend all your time fretting and worrying about bolts in a fuselage. I remember when making airplanes was about fun and art. We didn't bother ourselves so much with health and safety. When did we become so fearful? O.J. Simpson God rest his soul, no longer with us. Let's have a look now at how it's been reported on by the legacy media. What does he ultimately represent? What does the life and death of O.J. Simpson ultimately tell us? In a sense, he was the precursor of numerous stories that we see now. The story of the criminalized uh, uh, celebrity. Sometimes, of course, this may be due and just. At other times, it's merely a pantomime and theater. We, the public, we, the people, are left to discern truth from fiction. For surely the establishment can not be trusted. Here's some legacy media reporting on OJ. Boy, what a beautiful day it is here in Las Vegas. It's the last known video of OJ Simpson's nine weeks before his death from cancer. And typically, it was filled with falsehoods. My <laughs> typically, falsehoods, lies. Uh, I, someone in the chat goes, AJ's kicking it with the devil now. He's just kicking back with uh, El Diablo. Health is good. I mean, obviously, I'm dealing with some issues. Uh, but, hey, I think I'm just about over it. And I'll be... Um... Mad because he was such a sort of hero. Did you see that amazing documentary where it kind of... It was really beautiful, really, because he was contemporaneous with some amazing African-American athletes that made heroes heroic stands against the oppression that African-Americans were experiencing certainly then and many would claim of course continue to experience but at a time where them Olympians did the black power salute at a time where Muhammad Ali was saying I ain't got no beef with a Viet Cong and continued to be an advocate and significant voice OJ was like I don't want to be involved in none of that I just want to be an athlete and some people said well you know not everyone is going to be willing to sacrifice themselves for these all-powerful messages. OJ pushed vaccines, said Sneaky Gemini. It's pretty extraordinary if that's true, that he did promote those vaccines. If indeed, as some say, that he did die of a turbo cancer, which is sad, whoever it happens to. It's astonishing, isn't it? It's astonishing that if that were true, that's pretty extraordinary. He had a cool bronco, says Ooga Booga. That was some... That's when, like... Justice and television really fused, didn't they, in that moment? Let's see what uh, Karen Jean Pierre's got to say on this matter. Was there any reaction from the president to OJ Simpson's death? Do you know if they ever crossed paths? Sure. If so, how, when? 
So I'll say this, our thoughts are with, uh, are with his families during this difficult time, obviously with his family and loved ones. Uh, and I'll say this, I know... It's funny actually, because that's like she's forgotten that the O.J. Simpson narrative included a moment where potentially he murdered somebody and was found innocent, actually, I suppose. He was found innocent. But, of course, like there's a, that documentary is amazing, man, where it shows that because the conditions in your country and in Los Angeles in particular were so rife with injustice that the case became about something other than the event that it was supposed to be about. Astonishing uh, documentary. If you've not seen it, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's the best one. You know, it was astonishing analysis of the cultural event itself and OJ as a figure. I mean, I'm sure all of us recognise that when someone develops a kind of cultural cachet, what they have done is unconsciously in all likelihood attuned to some kind of cultural theme that's valuable and important to us. I've always thought that American movie stars tell the story to America that America needs to hear at that time, even if it's like someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger, a non-native American powerful and glorious who along with Bruce Willis and Sly Stallone told the story of Reagan's America and then like Sandler became the biggest movie star a kind of hapless adorable version of America I sort of this is of course just my own uh, half-baked analysis the idea that sort of America's transgressions in the Middle East for example somehow somehow were like inadvertent like, you know, Adam Sandler may slip up here and there, but he's fundamentally good. Of course, I'm not fundamentally connecting these movie stars to the geopolitical events, merely that on an archetypal level, they help us to understand and process them. Clearly there, Karin Jean-Pierre isn't including all aspects of the OJ narrative and a remarkable, brilliant athlete turned into a successful movie star and then somehow harnessing a great deal of energy that day in Brentwood. Uh, let's have a look at, what's, what's the rest of this, I suppose? So that they have asked for some privacy, uh, and so we're going to respect that. I'll just leave it there. We don't get too much in O.J. Simpson, man. It's a crazy, ultimately tragic story of the sort of part of the tragedy. I am okay, the real mix. I'm feeling pretty good, actually. I'm feeling, I'm buzzing, man. I feel cool about the world. I feel cool about the world. I feel... The glory is close. Let's have a look at this report that um, seems to suggest that Lunchables, which is, you know, a, a product directly created for kids, has got lead in it. Consumer Reports is asking school cafeterias all across this country to stop giving students Lunchables. Those are packaged food items that generally are really popular with kids. But the watchdog group says it tested them and found that some Lunchables contain potentially dangerous levels of harmful contaminants. Nancy Chan has been looking into this for us. Nancy, good morning. Tony, good morning to you. Nancy, is it true that Lunchables contain lead? Nancy, yes, it is true. We're poisoning children now. In fact, this is merely a more extreme example of something that is endemic and indeed normalized. To give children the amount of sodium and sugar that we do amounts to poisoning, but it's all a glorious circle of life if you keep feeding kids shoddy, dreadful food, then you can, of course, heal them using equally shoddy and potentially ineffective medicines. And the circle, the circle of life or, or death continues. Well, thank you, Nancy. That was an unanticipated answer. Thanks for joining us. You Lunchables have really been a longtime staple in lunchboxes across the country, but Consumer Reports, an independent nonprofit group, issued a scathing assessment of the lunch kit, saying, quote, we don't think anybody should regularly eat these products. Great. You don't know. It's food. That's not something you want to hear about food. Should it? All food should be edible. That's the minimum requirement for food. Is this food edible? Well, I mean, you can put it in your mouth and break it down with your teeth and swallow it. So, yes. This came after testing that allegedly found some store-bought versions contained high levels of heavy metals, lead and cadmium. They can cause developmental issues in children, even in small doses. The study also found concerning amounts of sodium as well as phthalates, chemicals used in plastic packaging. That Come on, man. This is getting out of control, isn't it? Poisoning children. High levels of sodium, phthalates, lead, cadmium. These are the type of stories that breach the surface are discernible, demonstrable, and I easily corroborate it that make me more willing to listen to and consider more outlandish theories about, for example, I don't know, chemtrails or things in the water. I mean, 
there is such sort of negligence, disregard and occasionally malfeasance present in big food, big pharma and the kind of systemic abuses that m pass masked continually through our lives that how can you just outright say, oh, no, that's ridiculous. The idea that we would be. Yeah. Yeah. Look at Stuart 3 one. Poison food, air, water, 5G, radiation, etc. Yeah, like say 5G, let's take that. You know, like there are, I understand, yeah, fluoridation. Yeah, you lot know in the Rumble chat. Listen, we're just going to be available for a few more minutes on YouTube. There's a link in the description. Sooner or later, you're going to have to come over to our place. Come on over where we can talk freely. You know, it just seems at least worthy of contemplation that this is systemic, deliberate, if not just the inert practices of uh, a, a careless system. Don't feed your kids Lunchables, but make sure that to get them vaxxed. Noted. That's Mitch7113. Okay, well, man, I don't know if I can even watch the rest of this. Let me try. There are also known hormone disruptors. Last year, after changing some of the nutritional content, Lunchables were allowed into the National School Lunch Program for the first time giving tens of millions of children access on a... Someone lobbied to get it permitted to be in the school lunch program so that it could be some great uh, catering company's deal to put Lunchables into school catering so they can buy it en masse and profit. Someone got lobbied, someone got biased, and no one at any point stopped. In a sensible and sane world that you can imagine just on the periphery of your mind, you just go, don't make that product anymore. Do you know what we should do, actually? Right, what we should do is we should feed children food that's either been grown or hunted or otherwise harnessed from the area that we're all living in. That might mean that there are less opportunities for profit. But let's focus all of our attention on localization. Let's for a minute stop regarding everything solely from a materialistic perspective. Lunchables is the pinnacle of the pyramid of commodity that we all lay sprawled upon, the base of your spine pierced, you spread eagled and hopeless, pummeled by a system of deep, deep loathing. And the only way down from this crucifix, and maybe Jesus, maybe we should just stay on it, is to awaken immediately. Near daily basis. But now Consumer Reports is calling on the Department of Agriculture to remove Lunchables from schools. In a statement, Kraft Heinz, which owns Lunchables, defended the product, saying it meets strict safety standards. The company You've got very strict safety standards and they include cadmium and lead being edible for children. Also, occasionally, I mean, what if you do you ejaculate into that stuff? I mean, what if that passes the test? What is the test? He added that lead and cadmium occur naturally in the environment and could be present in low levels in food products. But this is a staple for so many families because they're so easy to pack. Yes. Well, yeah, or yeah. in this case, it's taxpayers funding the lunches going to low income kids. Brilliant. There's a point where you have to just stand back and applaud. Tax player, taxpayers are participating in the poisoning of working class children. Amazing. It's actually costing you money. They've found a way to make poisoning children profitable, double profitable, because they'll profit when these kids grow up diabetic and full of heart disease. When they're obese at bare minimum, they've got a drug for that now. Christ, Christ help us. For God's sake, let us all become radicalized. I wonder if Kraft spend any money on legacy media outlets. I wonder if sometimes between these shows you see Kraft going, hey, if you don't have time to feed your children food that doesn't have lead in it, how about some food that does have lead in it? Now, I mean, the truth is processed food have small amounts of death in them. The truth is that if you are a parent, and I am, sometimes you think, well, you know, maybe a little bit of lead will calm them down. But the simple solution is change your economic and political and social models. I don't think Christ is interested in Lunchables. I think Christ would be interested if we explained what was in them, which he will know as he has the mind of God. Poisoning children. Like, this is it. This is what I'll say to you. 
Wisdom is acting on knowledge. On the day that you find out that Lunchables has lead in it, should be, we're banning that. We're never doing that again. Shut that shit down. What's the reason we're doing it? Oh, lobbying, donations, because craft advertising and legacy media. Oh, right, well, God, let's break down all of those monopolies. Let's no longer permit that. Let's certainly not use taxpayer dollars to subsidise it. Let's, from now on, have democracy available at the smallest level of subsidiarity, that people control their own lives and their own communities. That way, if there are cultural, religious differences or differences of traditionalism versus progressivism, they'll be nullified and irrelevant because in one state people can believe in this and in another state something people can believe in something else but what we should believe in in every single state is don't poison your children just because it's profitable and right the Zimmer report's saying it's hurting those kids mm. especially if you're a mom nancy that's not making the sandwiches and putting them in the paper bag mm. hello yeah. my name is gail that's they were very benefit. easy breezy yeah i ate all of them growing up hope yeah. They, yeah hope they can figure As that out lunchable very... says they're meeting the standards you got the question is are those standards sufficient yes very very concerning yeah. all, right. all right nancy thank you who sets the standards and do the people that set those standards receive revenue from craft or other processed food organizations? I think you know the answer to all of those questions. What's happening in Brazil right now? Is this video go or still the Mike Benz? Uh, Mike Benz is talking about Brazil. We're 20 minutes in though. Shall I plow onto that FBI thing? Um, in Ukraine, Parliament have passed a bunch of uh, draconian mobilization allowing for the freezing of bank accounts a la Canada that's happening there now. Let's have a look. Ukraine's parliament has passed a bill to overhaul how the military drafts uh, civilians in an attempt to boost its number. Is that about, it's not about banking. That, or are they going to freeze there? They're going to, oh, if you dodge it, they freeze your bank account. There you go. More piloting, more piloting. Uh, and also, in a statement beyond irony, the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has addressed Congress about the danger of nuclear attacks from... You remember this? You're Japanese, right? You're talking about you're talking about nuclear attacks. You're in front of Congress right now, okay? So right, <clears throat> I'm the leader of Japan, and I'm here to talk about nuclear attacks. I'm so glad I'm here in the Congress of the United States because you know I've got memory and everything, so I can remember that Russia, Russia's the problem. Bring up today, maybe East Asia of tomorrow. Furthermore, Russia continues to threaten the use of nuclear weapons, uh, which has contributed uh, to worldwide concern that yet another catastrophe by nuclear weapon use is a real possibility. In this reality... <laughs> oh man, that's so messed up, isn't it? Right. Also... Do you remember when you guys... All right, that's enough now. Thanks for coming. Russia's bad. We get it. We get it. Now, um, the FBI have showed up at a Trump supporter's home in California in order to penalise him in some way or another, one assumes. Let's have a look. So it didn't go the way they thought it would go. This is from the Sacramento FBI. What? What is it? <laughs> it's the sa Hello, it's the Sacramento FBI. What? What is it? Oh, you may already have won $10,000. It's never going to be good news, is it, with the FBI at the door? Hey, listen, if you're watching us on YouTube, this will be the last item we do. Then we'll talk a bit about, uh, I've got such a good story on uh, Alex Jones and that undercover CIA stuff. Plus, we talk about the complexity of Middle Eastern politics and how that story is being told in a variety of ways now as it continues to bifurc bifurcate and break down former alliances. That conflict... And the language around it and what's happening is, I think, set to be defining an ancient conflict that brings us to the pinnacle of the present. Right now, though, let's look at the FBI bugging this dude in California. Looking to talk to David. For what? Uh, hoping he can help us with someone he met online. So. All right. What is it? Could have done without his little pale tootsies. What is it uh, concerning? I'll tell you if you turn it off. I'm not going to turn it off. Some FBI man. Okay, what is it concerning? I'll tell you. 
There's only one way to find out what the FBI want from you. That's to stop filming, FBI. David Baumblatt in the chat. I am a former FBI. Get me on the show. Send us an email, mate. Email us and put David Baumblatt FBI and we'll talk to you once we've checked your credentials. A lot of nutters out there, you know. So. David, person we're here to talk about, I can't say on the camera. Okay. But it's well not then, about you. Okay, well then I can't. I'm not going to speak. If you're not going to say it on camera. That's also the FBI. Them two guys is the FBI. That was a very sarcastic wave from the FBI. This is embarrassing. The FBI is an embarrassing organization. They should be shut down, not because of the corruption, not because of the fake operations, not because of their implicit support of the establishment, not because they spent money to manage and control social media ultimately to censor it, but just because they're so awkward. What have you been up to? None of your business. Okay. You're refusing an interview? He's actually not refusing an interview, is he? He's just filming. Like, remember, this is another taxpayer-funded organization. Xandar86 in the Rumble chat. Thanks for introducing me to a new conspiracy theory. Nukes are fake. They're Hollywood special effects. Amazing. Amazing. It's another, I like... Is that going to be something I'm going to be leaving in a year? No, no, there never were nuclear... Now, come on, radiation. Come on, guys. Yeah, thanks. That's pretty embarrassing, isn't it, that, that sort of the deep state can be thwarted by just sort of filming them. Hello there. I am uh, Agent Smith, FBI. You're in a lot of trouble, Mr. Anderson. Well, you know, I'm just going to film you. Oh, well, uh, hmm, humanity, I hate them. It's the smell. Let me know what film that's from, you guys. We're going to leave YouTube right now, but we have got so much more to talk about. In particular, the complexity of the conflict in the Middle East. Would you describe Israel's actions in Palestine as a genocide? Joe Rogan does. Do you know that many Christians are dying in Palestine? Does it make any difference what beliefs people have? in their hearts and heads when they die as a result of military actions that to some degree at least are supported by the United States of America through the sale and indeed granting of arms. We'll be discussing that in a minute. Click the link in the description. Become an Awakened Wonder. Join us. We love you. See ya. All right.